What is up, everybody, and welcome to this quantitative finance series with an R. Uh, we're going to be going over concepts today of just getting data and uh, installing our studio in R, but we're going to go into topics in later videos like uh, algorithmic trading and portfolio optimization and a whole bunch of other stuff uh, that is centered around quant finance. And it's really, really easy in R compared to Excel or other tools. Uh, but the good news is R is free. And uh, a lot of people ask, like, is R the best tool for the job for this sort of thing? Um, in short, no, you're better off using paid services. But uh, R is extremely powerful. And if you're not looking to spend money and looking to just do a well-rounded analysis, then it's pretty much the tool for you. Uh, now, I recommend using R or Python over Excel for this sort of stuff, but you're free to use whatever you want. But specifically, you're going to run into problems when you start backtesting, which we're going to do in this series. Now, backtesting is a concept that we'll cover later, and I don't think I'm going to introduce right now. But essentially, it's just uh, applying historical data to a portfolio or a strategy and seeing how you did over time. It's really that simple. Uh, but putting it into practice is a lot more difficult. So uh, why am I using R for this instead of Excel? I guess I'll just go into that. Uh, first off, R and Python, for the most part, are the way of the future. If you are doing any sort of stuff in finance or working for an investment bank or working on Wall Street or something like that, chances are more and more people are using this sort of stuff um, rather than Excel because you're you're fairly limited in Excel. Um, you don't have nearly as much computing power. You can't run stuff in parallel. It's really an inferior tool if you think about it for this sort of stuff and it's just a lot faster and you have way more access to data i mean the main purpose that i'm using r for the most part is just for the data i mean i can get data 10 times faster and i mean 10 times more bountiful than i would in excel or you know something like that so I think that overall, it's better to use a programming language too because it's going to distinguish yourself on a resume. Um, this is another just introductory um, sort of thing, but it's more or less that more people are wanting to see this sort of stuff rather than Excel, which everyone has on their resume. So I encourage people within finance, um, specifically if they want to go into analyzing financial markets and things like that, to learn this sort of stuff being R and Python. Um, I think it's super, super valuable and it will help you out a lot. But anyhow, we can jump into the installation uh, process where we're going to install this IDE right here, our studio, and we're going to install R as well. But before we do that, let's just uh, plug my, <laughs> my website real quick. So this is programming for finance and you'll find a lot of useful stuff with an R over here, specifically for the first one. Um, this post right here is pretty good for obtaining data, which we're going to do. I think that's the first step. So yeah, this website is, is pretty, you know, good for R to help follow along. And I'm going to be posting more uh, stuff to help you guys follow along with this series as we go along. But if you have any questions, you can always look for other stuff online or reference here. Just had to plug my website real quick. Uh, now let's go over here to R Studio. We can install that first. And uh, you can download this just by clicking download R Studio, and you can download R by navigating to whatever page you need. I'm on the Windows page or whatever. Fairly standard. I'm not going to go over the complete installation. It's just you need to know you have to have these two things installed to actually run R um, and get started and following, fo excuse me, following along with this series. Uh, now, with that, we can get started actually installing some dependencies that we're going to need for this first uh, tutorial. So guys, once we have R and R Studio installed, we can start installing dependencies. So the way to do that, um, if you guys have experience in Python, you know Python has a package manager called pip. Uh, we have something pretty darn similar in R, but it's actually easier in my opinion to just get going right away because you don't really need to add any environment variables or do anything else. You're just going straight in the console right here and type in install.packages and in quotes, you can put whatever package you want right here. In this case, the first one we're going to put is QuantMod. And that's a super useful package with an R for Quant Finance. And we're going to use that package in particular to get data into our R environment right here. So uh, I guess just like a little tour of the R Studio IDE, you could say that this is going to house all your, this is going to be like a variable viewer, you could say. So if you have any sort of like, 
data frames or you have any sort of variables or you have any sort of, I guess, data overall in here, um, you'll be able to view it and we'll be able to see that once we actually import a data set, which I'll show after we're done installing a few more packages. But you can also see uh, plots right here um, and there's a whole bunch of other things you can do within here. This is just like a very brief overview. And if you have any other uh, questions about documentation, you can always preface uh, whatever package function you're looking for by a question mark and say, okay, let's say I want, if I import quant mod, so that's what I'll do first. This is how you import a library in R. So I'll say quant mod. And then I'll hit control and enter after I select everything from it. And then I will type in quant mod. And there we go. We have the documentation right here. Super easy. And if we have questions about a function in there, we can say, let's say, get symbols, which is a function in quant mod. And we can see right here, we have the documentation that we'll need. And again, this is really, really, really useful if you have questions on any of these um, topics we're going over and or functions. Next, what we're going to do is actually get some data. So we can start playing with that and seeing where we can go. So the first thing when we ever download historical data, what do we need? Um, we need a time series range, right? So if you go into Yahoo Finance, which is how I presume most people got data before this that didn't really program, um, you can go click on, you know, download historical data for a certain time frame and then save it as a CSV uh, file on your machine. Now, we don't need to do any of that. So when we get the data, it goes straight into the environment where we can use it and play with it. So what we'll do is set a max date, or actually I'll just say date, and we'll tell our we want it from, we'll do 2017, and then we'll do, I don't know, February 1st. And we'll load that. I keep pressing the wrong button because I'm, I'm on a Mac now. I'm so used to a PC. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll download, uh, let's say, Apple, because Apple's a really popular ticker. We'll download Apple, and we'll say get symbols and then we want yahoo so get symbols.yahoo and we want apple and we want from the date that we chose and we'll load that and see what it looks like and before i even do it the obligatory you know yahoo API, which inevitably comes up. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about right here, then you can just skip past it. But for those of you who are trying to get data from Yahoo um, outside of R and other packages like that, the API doesn't really work anymore, um, which means that you can't download data via an HTTP request like you could before. They patched it in, in, um, in R with the quant mod library. So that's how we're doing it. Um, and, and I don't even think get symbols.google because that's another function within R. So get symbols.google. You can see all of them here. Um, so Yahoo is really the only one that works, but there's significant changes to the data, and you're going to see that as a warning down on the console when we run this. So let's run it. And you'll see the warning right there. And it looks like... Uh, oh, I didn't specify... The environment but i think we should be okay with that um the only thing we need to put otherwise is auto underscore sign or auto dot assign equals f and then that should take care of that error there we go so that's going to basically um allow us to put it in our global environment right here i forgot that so if we click on Apple, we can see we have all the normal data that we normally get. Uh, so we have the open, high, low, close, volume, and adjusted. And adjusted basically just means adjusted close for dividends and splits and, and things along that matter. Um, we're just going to be using the adjusted close because that's pretty much as accurate as it's going to get for the closing price. But um, you can feel free to use the close too. 
Now, uh, this is an XTS object, and I feel like I should go into that before I go any further. So what an XTS object stands for is extensible time series object. So basically, just think of it as something that's going to hold time series data like this. And you're going to be working with those a lot if you're doing anything within financial markets, um, specifically with financial data. Uh, very, very important to get the hang of you know working your way around these. So that does it for getting data for a single symbol and most of the time we're going to be getting it for multiple symbols but we will um i guess just for the sake of the length of this tutorial focus on just one symbol so the next thing we'll do is just index this close column right here that we wanted so we wanted the adjusted for dividends and stock splits so we will use uh brackets and then followed by a comma and then the number of the column we want so we now have our close column right here and you can see that um, it's just that so there we go uh, and one thing I noticed is that I lost my Apple variable by accident so uh, let me just I'll re-add this because we're gonna need it to chart something later so I'm just gonna do Apple and then get rid of this and cool so we have that back now the next thing we're gonna want to do is uh, work with some uh, daily returns and this is going to be pretty standard for everything we're doing so we can use a library called Perf uh, performance analytics for this which we'll use for later but I don't think we need that for now but we'll just import it anyways so performance analytics it's a pretty useful library but uh, if you want to install that you can just say install dot packages and we covered that in the first portion of this video so I won't go over that now uh, we can use a few different functions to calculate the returns and it's really simple so we'll say Apple returns and that can be equal to daily return and we'll pass in our uh, close symbols our close prices and we want to say the type is equal to log because we want to use log returns and you can also use arithmetic uh, just whatever you do use make sure it's standard so if you're calculating returns with you know a log method then you're going to want to continue to do that for if you have a project um, to use log returns throughout you don't want to mix them up so uh, let's just load this really quickly and you can see we have it in our environment so we have everything we need right here in it I think omitted the oh no it just converted the first variable to zero so uh, typically what we can do is say na dot omit in this case is not gonna matter so if we want to if this this would typically be na right here so it's converted to zero from quant mods function but if it did show up as na we could just use na.omit and boom right there and you can do that for prices that are missing too because that's also another very 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 common thing is that we have a bunch of price data from stocks that aren't as well tracked as apple or amazon or netflix or something like that they're going to have missing price data and that's going to be a big problem because if it's a lot of prices then uh it, it can get really hairy real quick, especially if we have some time series worth of data for some stocks that are complete, right? So uh, we'll go over that later and what to do, but this is a simple hack right now just to say na.omit. We can also fill the mean and we can do a bunch of other things, but uh, it, again, if we were to do it with price data, we'd do the exact same thing, na.omit, and go from here. In this case, I'm fairly confident that Apple is pretty well tracked in this, so we shouldn't have an issue there. The last thing I'm going to go over is uh, just charting some basic data. So this is what I needed Apple here for with the open, high, low, and close. We're just going to do a simple plot, and QuantMon makes it pretty easy. And I'm not going to be using this in future series uh, or future videos, but this is just something I wanted to show just to um, chart it real quick so let's go in here and you can see right here we have our basic uh, it, it looks like a candlestick chart if I zoom in a little bit there we go so yeah it looks like that so we have the volume on the bottom pretty standard but again this required no programming to do if you were to do this all on your own it would take probably a little while but uh, this this is pretty much it for this tutorial and I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next tutorial, we'll be going over. So like, comment, and subscribe, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.